Yeah, we're finally at the end of um, all of the properties that as Mathematics Extension 1 students, um, you'll be able to think about and combine. And what I love about these particular properties is they take all of these things, this foundation we've laid, all these other properties we've established, and use them in very novel ways to prove very elegant relationships, okay? So do you remember, when we were proving our property this morning, what was the property again? What was it called? What's the short form? This is the angle in the alternate segment, right? When we proved that, do you remember I said you had to make a construction, and I said whenever you're making constructions you don't know where to go, a good idea is to put the center on, okay? The reason why is that once you've got the center, there it is. You have all kinds of equal lengths because of all of these um, radii here. And you can take advantage of those because equal lengths give you lots of isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles give you equal angles. And you can get lots of stuff from that. Okay? Now, in addition to isosceles triangles, circles also create a bunch of similar triangles. They come up everywhere. Because there are so many angles that are equal, when you have angles that are equal, you get similar triangles, okay? So I'm gonna show you three sets of similar triangles here, um, each of which gives us a really nice property about the intercepts in these uh, circles, okay? So here's the first setup over here. Um, you can see I have a pair of, what, what are these shapes on the inside of the circle? What do you call them? They're, they're chords, right, chords. And because they, uh, they clash, we call them intersecting chords. They're not just chords that are out there randomly. They have to touch in order to get this kind of configuration, okay? And you can clearly see that they create similar triangles if you just join up some of these chords, right? So you can do this in more than one way, but I think for me, the most obvious way is along that edge, up the top, and also down here. So it might not be immediately apparent to you that these are similar, but it's not hard to see what's going on, right? Think about some properties that you know already. Um, oh no, I don't need to, I'll just stay with black. And I want you to tell me where some angles are that we can use to prove similarity. I only need two pairs. Sharon, give me one. Say that again. Vertically opposite, so right in here, you have these two be equal. Could someone give me another pair? Think back to your properties. Yeah, go ahead, Russell. Okay, so I've actually not labeled the angles at the moment. I've just got um, lengths. This is actually, the property is about lengths. But um, tell me the property that you would use to prove that angles are equal. Yeah, yeah, very good. So for example, see this arc down here, which is unlabeled? You've got this guy and this guy both standing on that arc. You could make the same argument talking about this arc up the top. These two are standing on that arc. Does that make sense? Doesn't matter which one. Let's just do this one over here. So I will leave the formal part of this for later because it's really not that big a deal. You guys know how to prove similar triangles very easily. But you've got a pair of, <coughs> excuse me, a pair of equal angles there, a pair of equal angles there. They're equiangular, I'm done, okay? So now the interesting part comes from the relationships between these sides, okay? I want you to have a look at the sides up in this small triangle and which sides they correspond to in this larger triangle, okay? So for instance, side A in this triangle is the one between the dot and the double ang line angle there, right? So which side in the other triangle corresponds to A? It's D, right? You can see they're both um, bracketed by those two angles. So A over something is gonna equal to D over something, right? So there are the, sorry, what did I just say? No, it's the other way around, that way. I ever did. So these two sides correspond to each other. That's the ratio of those corresponding sides. So that only leaves the other ones, which are, let's see here. I'm gonna have, this is the small triangle, this is the big triangle, right? So out of C and D, which one goes on top? C? And then B, down here. Does that make sense? And my reason, of course, is, corresponding sides in similar triangles are in the same ratio, okay? Now, this is true, but a nice, an even nicer way to say it is to cross multiply, right? And you get AB equals to CD. Isn't that a nice, incredibly simple relationship um, between all of those four different lengths, okay? 
So how would we say this? Here comes the wording for this, right? You remember we said these are intersecting chords? Intersecting chords? Think back to when we were proving that thing about the parallel lines and the transversals. When you've got a line like this, an interval like this, and you break it up into pieces, what do we call those pieces? It starts with an I. Intercepts, very good. So I would say my wording for this is that it's about the products of these intercepts. Do you see that? So that's why I put these two in blue and these two in red. So I would say products of intercepts, because that's what A, B, C, and D are. They're intercepts, and you get products when you multiply them together. Product of intercepts on, what are these two lines called again? They're, and they're not just any chords, they are intersecting chords. They have to intersect to create that pair of similar triangles that we were taking advantage of. So products of intercepts on intersecting chords, it's just an equation. So you can just say they're equal. That's really nice. Okay.